All right. All right, so the first, you should see it on your screen. I've shared the screen with you. Um, PVC Technology Workshop. So again, thanks to uh, Jeremy, Josh, Rick, uh, and also Bunky for the up for suggesting the opportunity. <laughs> so why is an online presence important? Um, it really allows in this day and age for one-way information. Um, that's one of the things that I always tell my coaches is a one-way one uh, communication stream. It's a one-way opportunity where you feed information to a um, to a set group and you get them the information and it doesn't have to be something that's uh, back and forth or interactive and there are several different ways to get that information out. Um, it allows for a modernization, so to speak, of standards of practice, which could be athlete registration, score reporting, and scheduling. There are some of you that use, um, you know, pay for use athlete registration portals. Um, at Brewer, we've gone to a Google Google Form format where we sign our kids up uh, for our sports through Google Forms for free. Um, it also allows for score reporting and also for posting of schedules. And each district's going to vary on what they allow and what they don't allow. Uh, just in talking, you know, in our conversation yesterday, Josh was talking to a, um, a, a, I guess, an IT person down in Southern Maine where they don't allow for their schedules to go out online just because they're worried that somebody with bad intentions might grab onto those um, and, and know where the kids are going to be at any given time. So um, it does allow for those sorts of things. It gets people thinking about your product, marketing your brand. That's uh, something that's sort of uh, a collegiate mentality, more or less, but it's trickled down in the high school. And if you look in just within our league, there are schools that have uh, really made an effort to brand their image or even rebrand. Um, you know, I'll, I'll kind of throw both um, Foxcroft Academy and John Bapps are sort of the examples, in my opinion, that have done a rebranding, so to speak, with their, you know, their logo shop and their content and their um, things like that. John Baps went through a whole um, series of um, uh, a branding and marketing uh, survey and, and process. Foxcroft did the same thing where they came up with their pony head logo that that's what they want people to think about when they think about their schools. So it gets people thinking about it. It allows you a way to celebrate uh, great accomplishments to a, a wide audience. Um, you know, just in our experience and putting out all conference graphics and stuff that we've done for the seniors, we get great feedback from that. We get a lot of interaction. We get a lot of um, two-way two -way interaction on that. It also allows for a rapid communication, like in emergency situations, whether it's a snow day or a cancellation, or, you know, I'll use this winter, that Susan Collins situation. Uh, when that was all kind of unfolding, if we didn't have social media, you know, a lot of us were scrambling around on a game day to try to, you know, either communicate with one another, but also keeping an eye on each other's social media accounts to see what, you know, what was happening in our areas because it was all unfolding very quickly. Um, and for us, you know, at Brewer, we were putting stuff out on social media as it happened, and we were able to kind of keep everybody up to date as it was going down. I don't know if Josh, Rick, or Jeremy want to jump in on any of that before I move on. Nope. All right, so the next, uh, a branded image, and I referenced, you know, kind of using John Bapps and, and Foxcroft, in my opinion, are two of the, you know, the, the high level standards of, of a branded image and, you know, re-imaging their, their logos and, and things like that. It's a standard brand. And it looks, you know, and it looks sharp. It looks clean. Um, it looks crisp. I know Ellsworth did one recently as well. They rolled out a new logo. Um, you can ask your vendors for a logo shop. Um, and Jeremy will talk later about the differences between a PNG and a JPEG um, as far as what that logo shop could look like. Um, you know, you, you get coaches who want to make their own logo for each sport. Um, I would recommend you kind of like stay away from that, that you have a standard logo. I know uh, looking kind of at my multi-screen and I know Bunky went through a sort of a logo rebrand. Um, it leaves a mark 
those are you know modern images that, that that are up there but you can also throw in some nostalgia to the logo as well um, it's a similar tag across all your platforms that, that you utilize you want something to be consistent so there's no confusion uh, come up with catchy hashtags and you know things of that nature when when brewer wins a game i always hashtag it as a witch's win um, you know we've done some recently some catchy hashtags that have caught on we've done a fitness friday we've done a witch's wednesday um, where we wear wear and post to our social media content what we're wearing for brewer gear um, so just catchy hashtags that you know i'll have people even the media catches on when they on on friday night football they'll say that then that was a hashtag which is win i mean we haven't had many of those in the last two or three seasons but um you know they they have done that the other thing that comes into play is copyrights are, are there cop copyright um infringement concerns if you're grabbing a logo from say a professional team sport and trying to put your own spin to it um, I recall when I was at Old Town, if you, if you look at the coyote head that Old Town High School uses, it's a really nice looking uh, logo. It's the exact same logo that the Arizona or Phoenix Coyotes hockey, pro, uh, hockey club uses. Uh, Old Town High School at that time had to seek permission uh, from, from them to be able to access that and, and to be able to utilize it, which they were granted. Um, I believe that Old Town is one of the very few, if not only, um, coyote logo in the nation uh, so they were able to get that uh, there's a lot of schools that that kind of use the the new england patriot logo as a you know as as their schools the patriots um, you know you might just want to be careful about taking a logo and and making it your own that way um, this past winter we were working with um, main basketball hall of fame on a unified basketball tournament uh, at the at UMaine and we had to, they wanted to use the term March Madness on the on the basketball tournament, but the NCAA has that term copyrighted and you're not allowed to, to steal that for things like that. Um, I'm gonna let Jeremy jump in just so you guys are aware of a what a PNG versus a JPEG is. Uh, what is the difference uh, between the two of those? Just so you guys know what I'm talking about when you're talking about, you know, what format you want your pictures to be in. Unmute myself here. All right. So um, basically, I mean, it, the simplest form, most of your pictures will come in a JPEG form. Um, it, it, uh, JPEGs are, are, are great. They're great basic, you know, kind of uh, graphics in essence, but um, you know, it, it, basically the form is the form is the form, you know, you download it and there it is. Um, the PNG form um, is great for uh, manipulation in essence. So if you're going to do things like graphics and logos, um, if you're going to cut out backgrounds or um, try to make, uh, you know, translucent backgrounds or transparent backgrounds, um, saving something in a PNG file or format will allow you to manipulate the image a lot easier. It also compresses the image, so it allows it to be um, a little bit more um, uh, easy to transfer into different um, different formats between especially social media. Um, if you're going to go into something like Instagram versus Facebook versus um, uh, uh, what the heck is that called? Twitter. Um, but there, there are different, I mean, as it says online, it's a, it's a, a, a lossless compressed in file format. Um, whereas JPEG, which is kind of, uh, you know, it's, it's all over the place. It can be pixelated. Um, so it, the, the PNG formats are just a lot easier to work with in essence or manipulate. Um, and that's really kind of the big difference between the two. If you're just going to create an image and have an image and, and just have it, um, JPEG format's good. Um, when you start getting into changing backgrounds and changing um, other elements of it, um, you definitely want to transform it into a PNG. And then you can you can always go you can always save it back to the other formats. Um, and then I, 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 what I also found too, I did a little digging last night. Um, you know how you do these things um, depends on what platform or computer you have as well. Um, Macs are a little bit different. I work off of Macs. Um, the keystrokes and 
and how you do things are a little bit different than Windows machines, HPs, um, Dells, things of that nature. So um, the, I guess the best advice I would have for people is to, to recognize what machine you're on and then do a basic Google search on how to um, change around or manipulate certain file formats for photos and it, and it should work out pretty, pretty good for you. So that's all I got, Otterback. Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, Rick or Josh, and either you want to yeah. jump? I would just say to, to, to follow the, the theme of this slide and to keep it simple, you know, I, what my audience really likes is game day announcements, game day scores, and promotion of um, any achievements. And all that with a, a JPEG and, uh, and some basic apps here is all, you know, that to me is a social media presence. Yep. Josh, you good? Good, let's carry on. All right, um, choose an easy to find uh, footprint or name. Uh, so this is if you were gonna start up an account, uh, you don't have an account and you know, you're gonna, you're gonna create one, either it's on Facebook or uh, Twitter or even Instagram. Um, what, one of the things that I really recommend is you've gotta separate personal and business. So by business, I mean your school presence because once you intermix the two, you're gonna, you're gonna lose control of what you can post and what you shouldn't post on your uh, personal and individual page. Uh, this was uh, sort of hammered home at the National Conference to me this year with a session that I went to and then Lee Green spoke about it as well. That as soon as you, you know, if, if you look at my Facebook page, if I made just a generic post related to Brewer High School um, under my David Utterback Facebook, I now become a um, communication entity for the school department so that if you know now that's the the communication mode um, and a means of, of getting a message out now it's different if I grab on to you know something off the brew Ath athletic Facebook page and then share it but as soon as I start posting information specific to the school function um, I can no longer edit or censor um, any sort of feedback that I get, that becomes a, an avenue for official communication. And as a school entity, you cannot censor uh, what people's opinions are on what you are um, posting. So, you know, if I was to just on my page posting scores and I put, you know, four to two um, hockey loses, you know, and that's where I wanted people to get uh, game scores for Brewer High School, the second that somebody jumped on and said, yeah, it's because your coach sucks, um, I can't go in and delete that comment or censor that. So that's why I say separate the two. Now, you're still not able to do that on, you know, I can't do that on Brewer Witches Athletics Facebook if somebody posted that, uh, but it keeps you separate out of that personally. Um, it's going to keep your school separate from the personal side of it. And, you know, I would recommend you make it easy to find, easy searchable. You know, if you were to just go on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram and search Brewer Witches Athletics, my stuff would come right up. Same thing I know with Herman Hawks um, Athletics. Ellsworth High School is EHS Athletics. Um, it's just easy. It's easier to do that. And I'm not saying it's right or wrong how other people do it, but I know in, the, in our other league, the KBAC, when I'm trying to tag other schools into some posts, you know, they, some of them have their RSU school number or their SAD school number. You know, I don't know that necessarily. I, could, I couldn't tell you what, you know, Bunky, some schools are in AOS. Like if I want to tag MDI in a post, I don't want to type AOS 97 or whatever he is um, in, into, a, into a post. So, you know, this makes it easier for the media to find you. Um, it makes it easier for your followers to find you. Um, and then one of the things I was going to do was kind of just show you how to sign up for a Twitter account because we did talk about it the last PVC meeting was creating a PVC Twitter handle. Uh, but as I was exploring that, I need to come up with a separate email because I have too many Twitter accounts any, uh, right now. I have all of my emails are tied up in Twitter accounts, my personal one to my own Twitter and then the school one to, um, to the Brewer Witches one. So just 
keep it simple on how you create. If you don't have any presence, keep it simple. Um, you know, if you, you searched Mike Bisson, he has an MPA uh, Twitter account and he has a Mike Bisson citizen account. It doesn't say that, but there are two separate accounts because he's, he's trying to separate uh, his work with the MPA and his, and his own uh, personal followings. Uh, Jeremy, Josh, or Rick, want to jump in at all on footprint? Oh, I covered it. I think uh, also I, I back, and I, I apologize if you did cover this. I was having a glitch here, but it, it, it's important also to know what your district policies are with this. Did you cover that? No. Uh, yeah. Uh, go ahead oh, and take that. That's uh, a very good point. Yeah, so so it's it's important to understand, um, you know, who, who you should have, uh, how how your social media accounts should be run. Um, if there should be people that should have multiple access, like at Old Town High School, we have um, our Facebook, Instagram, everything, uh, Twitter, um, not the other platforms yet, but. I can imagine them coming, but every single one of them has to have multiple administrators on it, as well as IT um, have access to it. Um, so it's it's also it's important to, to know if your district has any policies about um, you know having kids as as friends or followers. Um, you know, for instance, our Instagram uh, we we follow. Uh, students and family members and, and parents back once they follow us. Um, but I, some other districts, you know, uh, do not, you know, partake in that because they, they don't want to get into the liability aspect of having followers. Um, but but just just be aware of, of uh, you know, who and what and how you're supposed to set up your um, social media footprint and make sure that you're, uh, you're with inside all of those guidelines of your district. Yeah, a very good point uh, made by Jeremy there. Um, and that sort of takes us into the next uh, topic, which is, you know, the, the one of the options for a online footprint, obviously, is a website. Having a website uh, domain is a great way for a variety of different content and information to be put out there. Um, you can, there are really, I think, I'm, I'm sure there's more than three options, but there are, there are, in my opinion, three different ways you can do this. You can do a separate you know, standalone website, which is what we do at Brewer High School. Uh, Brewer Athletics has its own website. It's separate from the school department ac academic side. Um, ours is GoBrewer, which is .com. We pay $4,000 a year for the domain access to this. We get over a million and a half hits on the website every year. Um, and, and there is an annual cost uh, for this. So our website costs 4000 and we get white sporting goods to pay for that. Um, and that's the trade back on an exclusive purchasing um, deal with that we have for sport equipment with whites. Um, so that's, you know, that's one way to do it. Um, Rick, you know, I know Rick and a lot of other schools, uh, they have through AptG and um, the, that common website in Maine Department of Ed. Uh, they have a different, you know, I'm going to click on, take you to the Herman. So this is off of their school districts page. This is, you know, the athletic page that that Rick has. Um, he's got different things in there. He's got his online store, conference, what practice schedules, you know, he's put his athlete registrations on there. Um, but this is run through his school department. You know, they have one website that that kind of feeds everything. So and that's, you know, doesn't mean that it's wrong or right or better or worse. That's how they do it. And, you know, and then there's another way right now there's our schools today, if you don't have any presence or a website, I would recommend jumping on board with our schools today. You know, that partnership with the MPA is they're considering it a one-stop shop. I'm gonna go back to uh, Rick and, you know, those folks that kind of use that athletic arm of their school website already, they can kind of talk about that. Uh, yeah, so the, the, the first option that you talked about, Dave, is, um, is is probably um, the way to go. I feel like to promote your own your sports program, your athletics program. Uh, unfortunately for me, uh, we did that one year, and then our school purchased an entire website. You know, redo that includes all our buildings and 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 also athletics. So uh, I had to stop that 
that uh, style of having my own site, and and now I'm with the with the school. Um, I think one of the biggest things that's listed on this slide here, at, at, at least as far as feedback that I've received, is the mobile app. <laughs> um, yours, I know Brewer offers that uh, through Aptigy, uh, um, which is the creator of my school site. We offer that as well. Uh, I don't know how many visits I have to my website exactly, uh, but I think I have a lot more visits to my mobile site. Um, and luckily for me, you know, I have a platform where I can my, maintain my mobile site and it also updates my website um, all through one, one place, uh, which is offered by Aptigy. Um, and the last thing I, I would say is that if you don't have one yet, our schools today is offering the opportunity to do it and it all aligns with the MPA. So I'm sure everybody knows this, but you do your forms, cancellations, schedules, rosters, everything like that. And it's all connected to the MPA, uh, which saves a lot of time. Is, is that part of the $70 fee that you pay or is that an extra, that will be an additional fee? Right. It, there's an additional fee. Okay. Josh or uh, Jeremy, any Insight on website? Not not a whole lot more. I will say that I don't I don't think that we have a huge following on the website as much as we do on social media. It's hard to traffic that, but I think more people go to your Facebook pages and things like that than they would all go to the website. Right. All mobily. <laughs> right. I would agree with that, Josh. Everybody goes to my Facebook page to find stuff. I also think they go to my app to find information nobody's sitting in front of a laptop ordinarily and uh going to the website and and trying to find information i think that's like the last place they go uh but they have their phone in their hand they hit the button everything that's on my website's on there in the palm of their hand now i think that's the feature that's used the most yeah yeah and i have i have the same format as rick does um, in, the, in the sense of an app to G and we, we jumped on board with that about a year and a half ago um, and contracted with them. Um, and I have the same, our, our website, it's the same format. The difference with us is that we, we're not separate with our athletics. We're all tied together um, into one. Um, it's been a lot of retraining um, our, our populace, but like Rick said, the, the biggest thing that, that we have is this, which is our, our app. Um, and that's what I think Rick's is the same thing. Um, and, and it's uh, everything that's on our website is on this app. And then it also allows or affords us the ability to, to shoot out live notifications, live updates. Um, you know, we use that in, in kind of, a, a, uh, important information basis, um, just so it doesn't create a white noise. Um, and people, you know, don't get annoyed with it and turn it off. So as far as like sports scores and sports updates, um, we don't use notifications, but for cancellations, we use notifications. For reschedules, we use notifications. Um, but this is, this is a, a pretty cool format with, it, with the ability to, to get us like all, everything that we need in essence, um, all right here, um, which is tied directly to the website, which also, um, you know, AptG has another, uh, another for or another basis of of sharing on 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 the social media platforms between its live feed um and then also i have the ability to link other social media platforms um through their partner app which is called thrill share so um there's there's multi multimedia platforms that are all right there not to mention it gives kind of a you know a professional look um a branding look for that matter to your to your school um for your your you know, for, for your population to, to be able to look at all the information needed. So it's, it's cool format. Yeah, that uh, notification ability is uh, really key. And that's, you know, that rapid communication chain, you, you change the status of a game on your phone, or if you're sitting at the computer, and that pushes it out to those subscribers that have, you know, have followed that sport, uh, that that is very valuable to parents. Um, you know, valuable to the kids. A lot of times the kids will get the notification while they're in school. So they'll, you know, they'll know without that old school way of over the intercom. 
Um, but that, that's really kind of changed the game as far as communication is concerned. It's, and you're not flooding the school department with phone calls now, like, you know, people calling up the main office and saying, hey, is the game on today? Well, you know, you can feed them where the information is and then let them have the opportunity to, to uh, go get it. Um, so we'll move on to the next one. Um, the different options for the social media, which is really different than a website presence uh, altogether. Um, as Jeremy alluded to, you can tie in some of these social media platforms to a website, you know, for our website. And I know uh, Thrillshare with like Herman and um, Old Town, they can tie in their Twitter account to live feed. We have a lot of people that don't have Twitter that go onto our website and they follow Twitter that way. They just see what's in the live, the live feed on when we, uh, when we tweet out. But the different options are the basic ones. I mean, this is a basic menu of, um, of social media, the big ones, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Snapchat, uh, the new one that you're probably all getting sick of if you are parents that are quarantined at home with kids is TikTok. Um, that, there are schools that are getting on uh, to TikTok or not necessarily schools, but maybe collegiate teams that are getting on to TikTok. Um, and the basic thing here that I want, or the two points of social media that I want people to kind of understand is the thing that you're trying to do on your social media is to stop the scroll. Okay. So if you kind of just think about how you go through your own Facebook or if you're on Twitter, you're taking your finger and just going whoop, 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 up, up, up. And, and that's scrolling that screen until something captures your attention. So some of the stuff that we're going to talk about next is intended to stop the scroll to get people to see, see and digest what you're posting, not just, click on it or not just like it. Um, and then the other thing really is to know your audience audience on each platform. So those are the two uh, things that I want you to take away from this, uh, from the next part. So the first one is the really the most uh, prevalent one is Facebook. If you don't have a, you know, an athletic Facebook page, I would consider getting one. This is where you're going to be able to feed your, um, your to your lot largest audience as a whole. Um, that's where the most users are. This is you know, if you, I'm going to jump right to the bottom, who is on Facebook? This is an older demographic. This is parents, grandparents, extended family, family uh, members, and the, really the community members at large, the people that are really interested as alumni or, um, you know, that demographic of, of community member. There are pros and cons to each. Uh, Facebook, one of the pros is it's really, this, it is the most popular uh, social media platform worldwide. Uh, there's a reason why Facebook has the, um, financial capital to buy Snapchat and they can buy Instagram and they can, you know, they can scoop up all of these other, um, other uh, commodities that come into play. Facebook is massive. It's uh, worldwide. Um, it offers the most options for content, whether it's video, uh, posting video, posting photos, uh, the length of the characters, as far as what you can post. Uh, it's, it allows for a live feature where you can go live stream through Facebook um, as, as a platform to, to live stream. And I really think one of the things I'm going to talk about at the end is I, I think live stream, the ability for everybody to be able to live stream, you're going to get asked if we get into a social distancing in the fall um, guideline where you can only have a certain amount of spectators, or maybe you can only have the participants at your athletic contest. You've got to be able to feed your community, your content, and this could be an avenue to do it. A free one through a Facebook live to just have somebody on an iPad live streaming um, an athletic game. Um, if we are in a restrictive um, restrictive society at, uh, come fall, that may be an option. Uh, you know, just a live stream. I know Josh does it with his page. I've done it with my Facebook page. Um, that ability to go live on Facebook is gonna be key. Um, it's easily attached to a personal account. So if you already have a Facebook page, you can separate the two but manage you can separate the two and manage the two as separate entities. So like when I log into my Facebook page, I have a little tab that has a little orange flag and that's my Brewer, which is athletics Facebook page. Um, the two are totally separate, but I can manage it right from one account. Uh, the, the page content can be boosted. If you want to push it out to a larger audience, you can pay for that advertising. It can target uh, through their algorithms. It can target, uh, who you need. And then you have the more of an ability through Facebook to go viral with a 
with a post. Uh, you know, one of the examples was when we had our tragedy with the hockey player uh, in, the in the fall, in November, right before the season. Um, we made a post about UMaine hockey kind of really supporting us. And that, that was shared out and interacted with by over 10,000 people. Um, so that's sort of the standard is that it went viral because it was over 5,000 uh, interactions. That was seen worldwide. Um, the cons to Facebook is also one of the, the pros is that because it's such a large audience that, you know, there's just pure percentage wise, there's going to be somebody that sees what you post and they don't like what you post or they get a bad memory of, you know, you're going to, you're going to be susceptible to negative interactions through Facebook just because of the, the sheer size of the audience. Uh, Facebook does lead to more interaction with the users and that can lead to uh, being negative. Um, Facebook, if you go into comment pages on Facebook about anything related to, you know, uh, politics or social issues, there's nothing in there that's positive. If you just scroll through the comments, um, more likely to be a negative interaction. There is the ability for the viewer to interact with the post uh, through Facebook. They can put, there's no limitation on how long their comment can be, whereas Twitter and Instagram really aren't designed for that sort of interaction. You really can't control who follows or interacts with it. Like somebody just clicks on the thumbs up icon and they're following you. You don't have to follow them back, but you have no control. There's no mechanism to make them have to uh, go through a vetting process to, to be able to view your content. And quite honestly, Facebook, I think, censors the most. Facebook is very concerned with content and copywriting. Um, I don't know if Mike Archer and Jeremy caught this at the hockey game when we played them in the playoff game, um, but, but when there was the, the issue with the Zamboni that was, it didn't have, you know, wasn't laying the ice, the two crowds started doing the YMCA dance back and forth, the Brewer crowd and um, some of the Old Town Orono crowd. And I posted that you know, just kind of that cool interaction between the two crowds and Facebook took it down as a copyright infringement because of the song. Twitter and Instagram left it up. Um, so Facebook grabs onto those sorts of things a lot, um, a lot more than any of the other pages. They're very concerned with content and with copywriting. And in my opinion, they censor out what they don't, what they don't feel is appropriate. I don't know if anybody, uh, Jeremy or, Josh or Rick want to want to add to any of that? Yeah, I'll I'll just echo that. So when we do all our live streaming of events, um, basketball games and football and and soccer and whatnot, um, when their kids have their warm up music going, I actually have to turn the microphone off because Facebook will take that song, whatever they have, because we don't have permission to uh, to play the song. So it may go live still. But then when it goes to upload to the page, someone can go back and watch it, it will just disappear and they won't be able to basically see it. Um, the other thing about Facebook that uh, Dave was just kind of talking about was stopping the scroll. The big thing is when you put something on Facebook, put some type of graphic image because people look at pictures. Um, so like when I uh, posted the little letter that my baseball coach wrote to his team um it got over 12,000 um re or reached over 12,000 people and i think partially that's because i put a picture of them at the state championship game last year and he was getting dumped over the head with a bucket of water or whatever and um and then his letter so people saw that picture and then went back and read what it was all about so is we even do that Yesterday when we made like a, the guidance department made a post on the Ellsworth High School page. Um, and they, uh, you know, I, I put a picture up of them, like a note from the guidance office or something like that. So people could kind of, kind of see that. I will say with Facebook, um, and I know Jeremy, this is different at, her name in Old Town, but I have my own EHS athletics page and we have an Ellsworth High School page. Um, and I, the good and the bad of that is, is I'm always posting to both because I'm kind of responsible, kind of taking upon myself to be responsible to do that. But I'm posting specifically athletic stuff to the um, athletics page. And I have to kind of constantly remind others, um, you know, we're putting up 
senior photos of from senior night from basketball night to the Ellsworth High School page. And I have to kind of remember, you know, hey, don't forget to throw up some show choir pictures or some um, pictures from art class or whatever it may be to the high school page. So um, Jeremy can probably talk a little bit about that, you know, but it's, you know, I, I like the separation of the two, but I know not everybody can do that. Facebook's algorithm, I learned this at a national conference a couple of years ago, Facebook's algorithm is intended to push out a post that has a picture attached to it to more of your followers. So just because you follow a page doesn't mean it will show up in your newsfeed. Depends on how you interact with content and their analytics show that mo more people interact with a post that has a picture. So that's why, you know, um, Josh has, has touched upon that. That's important to put, uh, to pick, to put pictures with, with posts, even if it's just a stock school logo, you know, I'll, I'll always put a post up that has a picture on it. Uh, the next one is Twitter. I'm just going to real quick, try to buzz through this. Uh, Twitter is just a quick hitter. Uh, it, it limits your characters. You can only think type in 150 and that includes spaces and, and punctuation marks. Uh, it's quick hits of information um, or else you start getting into long threads where you're adding, um, adding different parts. It's, it's probably the biggest cross section of users. So again, knowing your audience, um, this is where you're going to find a lot of your media uh, folks to get just, they want to just graze over the information and see scores. Um, users of Twitter are, they'll, they only follow what they want to follow. Whereas Facebook is, you know, like there's that friend request process. Some of us have like 5,000 friends on Facebook, even though in real life, we probably only have like four or five actual friends. Um, you know, Twitter is just followers. It's stuff that you're interested in. Um, it really, the, the user interaction is greatly reduced due to the character limitation. You have the ability to control who follows you. So you can make that a private account where they have to request to follow you. Whereas Facebook, a page on Facebook, it has no really no ability to do that um, unless you made it a separate like personal account uh, then you could you could control and accept friend requests the cons to twitter really are character limitations and the less text is allowed the user interaction limitation you'll see more direct messaging uh, through twitter uh, just because they can't save their piece in whole you know on on a comment or a reply and generally i don't see that on twitter anyways um, I don't, I don't have a lot of people interacting other than retweeting and liking posts on Twitter. So it's a limited, it's a little bit more of a limited and a more of a targeted audience. So again, knowing your audience, there's limited video sharing ability through Twitter. Um, they sort of want you to condense a video down to one minute as, as opposed to Facebook where you could put three hours worth of video on it. And I think Twitter is really the least censored and controlled. I mean, there's a lot of odd accounts that are going to try to follow you. Um, I don't know if that's true for Rick and Jeremy, who, who also have a school controlled Twitter page, but I, I get a lot of weird, you know, I'll, I'll look on and says so and so followed you and I'll look at the account and it's like, it's obviously some phishing robot account that, that uh, they're trying to bait you into something. So any of you guys have anything to add on Twitter, Jeremy, Rick? <clears throat> for me, Twitter is the, uh, least utilized by my community, but the best resource for, as Dave said, for the media. Yeah. Uh, most of my Twitter interactions are uh, retweets by like Eric Gullickson or Andrew Badillo or somebody from a, from a news entity that is, uh, you know, looking to, for scores for their evening show, final scores or, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, and that's, uh, you know, where you can feed the media your storylines. Um, you know, if I, over the last couple of weeks, that's where I've been putting some of my stuff out over what we're doing for senior. I'll get, a, I'll get a call from Gully or Andrew and say, hey, saw your tweet. Can we follow up on whatever it might be? So that's really your lifeline and, and way to keep media happy is, is probably the best way is through Twitter. Uh, Instagram is uh, relatively, I would say, new to the – sort of the, the marketplace as far as well, how we use it um, in Maine high schools. I'm not sure of a whole lot of high schools that are on Instagram, but we added an account last summer um, and I have about a thousand followers. And again, 
Um, this is one that's really a targeted audience. I'll, I'll jump right to the bottom. If you hear people saying and using the terms IG or the gram or Insta, they're talking about Instagram. Um, and this platform is where the majority of your students are active on this. And the reason why is because parents started to flood Facebook. So kids went to Twitter um, and then parents started to get on Twitter. So now kids are on to Instagram. Um, they may have accounts on each, but they're not necessarily active on uh, Facebook, certainly. And then uh, on Twitter, they're a little more active, but they're trying to get away from where the parents are. And right now, this is where the least amount of parents are. And so then kids will move on to the next thing, which they started to do already, which is Snapchat and TikTok. But um, this is this is a really a creativity platform for kids. Uh, but it's also a place where you can get your message out. Um, it's photo centric. So it's it's really you've got to put your information into a photo um, and get your get your message out that way. It is really kind of the least um, two-way interactive, all that somebody can do as far as an option on Instagram is either like your post or make a comment on it. And it's really, there's not a lot of comments on Instagram posts, um, at least at the high school level. This is the largest student audience. So if you have an announcement or something, you want to get out a message that's targeted to students, this is where you would want to put it. Um, you don't have to reciprocate K to follow. So on my account, I have a thousand people that are following uh, Brewer Witches Athletics. I'm only following one account um, because there's less media on Instagram. I follow, I only follow the Brewer High School student section page. I just want to see what they put out. And, um, you know, and, and we've had conversations after some of the stuff that they've put out about some of their ideas at games and they've been positive and you do have the ability to control who follows. And it's just, you know, one of the pros is it's not conducive for an, an interaction platform. So you kind of avoid that negative piece. The con again, though, is that it's photo centric. So you have to really make sure that you have a good stockpile of photos or somewhere to grab photos that you can create. Um, somebody in your community that takes athletic photos, if you want it to be photo specific thing. Um, Instagram is really specific on the size of the photo for their sharing platform. You can only reduce it so, so to so little to fit um, into their, into their model. And then most users just want to see the photo. They don't necessarily want to read the descriptor. So you, you, you know, you don't have an opportunity really to get any message out that's really long. Um, Rick, I know is new to Instagram. If you want to jump in on this at all, you feel free. Yeah. Yeah. So Instagram has been a uh, thing that I started since uh, we've been on uh break from school here. And, and one of the things that I can reiterate that Dave has said, or has listed on this is, uh, you know, I started this probably four or f five days ago, maybe I've got 125 followers. Uh, and I would say out of the 125, probably 110 are kids. Um, and so I think that it's going to be a great way to get information to kids and also promote them and, and them and their friends will be able to see, to see it. Uh, and again, this is 125 people and I'm, we're not in school or anything like that. Um, you know, to, to have the kids talk to each other about it. Um, so I like, I like doing the graphics. I like doing the photos. Um, and, and so this, this, this format really, uh, suits me and I, and I actually, I plan on using it quite a bit. Okay, so I, ha I have a question in regards to, um, so so Rick, if if you want to, if you want to post a um, some type of accolade for one of your athletes, does this mean that that uh, uh, so you have Facebook, Twitter, and and Instagram? Do you do you have to post three three different times, or can you it, it, can we have it all linked? To, I think that's one of the worries. People We're going to explain that in a minute. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's a good question. Yeah. yeah. Very good question. Um, so I'm going to let Josh, Josh is going to, he's, he's taking on the uh, TikTok plunge. Um, so Josh is going to talk about TikTok and what that is and, and uh, Snapchat. So go ahead, Josh. Can I share my screen or does that not able to happen? Sure. We're on the host. I'm not sure if you can.
So um, I just, what I did when we uh, left school was um, I, uh, I took the Eagles costume home and started doing a bunch of things with that with my kids and whatnot, kind of acting out some things and whatnot. So um, I don't know if I can share a screen yet, but um, so basically I just took the costume home and I did a bunch of TikTok videos with the, with the kids in it. We did a uh, spirit week here at Ellsworth High School and, uh, and one of the days was TikTok day. So I had, I had the Eagle do a uh, TikTok dance um, and, um, then the other one was just, um, I had the Eagle do another one. I, I put it about with TikTok. I haven't, I had like five or six kids asked to follow the EHS underscore Eagle TikTok page, but, um, they, I haven't accepted them yet. So I don't know how much, I know a lot of colleges, like we went to the national conference. There you go. Um, when we went to the national conference, um, they talked about TikTok and a lot of, um, a lot of colleges are using TikTok. And, and I think back in the fall, didn't the Sea Dogs guy that was a guest speaker talk about them doing TikTok and whatnot. So it's just more video music themed. There's not, you're not going to use it. For, you're going to use it for entertainment. You're not going to use it as far as like schedules or, um, anything like that, all academics or all conference, none of that sort of stuff. You're just going to use it as more of a, if you have a mascot or something like that, you know, maybe your baseball team does a TikTok dance and then you share it on that or some, something along those lines. It's more entertainment than it is informational. Yeah. And I'd say Snapchat and TikTok kind of would do the same thing. Um, it's more of a, you know, creativity platform than an information platform where Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram could be. Um, Instagram sort of, I would say, would be the best of both worlds, uh, creativity plus information. But Snapchat and TikTok, you're certainly, you know, that's sort of where the kids are going. And if that's where they're going to end up, then, you know, I'm sure somebody will figure out a way to, to feed information through those platforms. But right now, it's kind of like I I put it as uncharted waters, uh, so to speak. And seen a lot of college teams, like Josh said, kind of getting into that. Um, I don't, I'm not aware of anybody else in Maine that's on TikTok other than Ellsworth High School Athletics, so, <laughs> or, or Snapchat even. Uh, YouTube is a solely just a video content sharing platform. Um, it integrates well with other video platforms being utilized by high schools, which include Huddle um, and Zoom. So this this conference that we're on right now, I could be live streaming it through my Brew Witches Athletics YouTube uh, channel. Uh, YouTube is free. Most of you have a Gmail account, or if you don't, you could link it to a Gmail account for free and create your own channel. Um, it does have the ability to live stream content um, and it allows for extensive archiving of videos. And it's really not built for two-way interaction or really, or for information sharing. It's just a, it's a means to an end if, if streaming is something that interests you um, you would look at YouTube so I'm going to uh, kind of link us to the Brewer Witches Athletic page two weeks ago I did a college bound virtual signing day which is this one up in the uh, the first offering on the left um, we were able to archive that as video but also I live streamed it on um, on this page and as you can see at the bottom it shows you how many people have viewed that since it, it went and posted, so 323 people viewed it. During the signing itself, there were another 100 people that were on there watching it live. Um, I, we, we have a huddle camera in our gym, which is what these unified basketball games are, and it streams it live through YouTube. We do run into that censorship because um, YouTube is kind of run uh, through Facebook a little bit where if we play pregame music, the game will get flagged and, you know, it, it'll – pull it off of the archived video. So we actually delete all our game film after the game uh, just because we don't want other teams scouting us or, you know, I, I'm worried a little bit about that copyrighted stuff. Uh, but these have our unified basketball games on it and that's through Huddle. Uh, Huddle, uh, we pay for a Huddle camera that live streams out and also records at the same time. Uh, but YouTube is a really good platform for video content. We're gonna live stream our Hall of Fame banquet whenever we get to it. And then the other thing that, you know, I sort of mentioned earlier, 
was um, this fall or even through the winter, if we have restrictions on crowd sizes, you're going to be asked to come up with ways to live stream your sporting events and creating a YouTube channel provides for that opportunity, whether it's with Huddle or with, um, with Zoom. So Brewer School Department, we paid for the Zoom Pro account. We paid to have two or three different administrative hosts, um, but it's, it was only $200 for the year. And we could live stream, I could put somebody on a little platform at a soccer game with an iPad just following the play and live stream through Zoom, the Zoom app through YouTube every soccer game or every field hockey game or every football game, you're going to be, you're going to be asked to do that potentially. And, you know, this is one way that you could accomplish that. You could be proactive about it. Say you have a plan, you know, creating a YouTube channel for your, for your school athletic page and uh, using some of those different ways to live stream out. Dave, do you just, do you just ask random students to like, you know, my, I, I, I can foresee this as, as um, you know, this fall. I mean, I think it's a great point that if if we have restrictions, that definitely is going to be something that we're that, that's going to be an expectation of, of of us to be able to bring that to the community. Um, and is is that something that? And if we're going to do it for one, we're going to have to do it for for every single one. And my concern is is this finding enough people well, that are to yeah. sit with an iPad and. I think you could offer it as a game day essential staff, you know, $25, $20 or whatever it might be to, to, you know, a teacher that manages the iPad. We haven't gone down that road because we have the automated camera right now with, with Huddle, but this is, this was just one of the things when I saw the ability to live stream through Zoom, I said, that was one of the ways I sold it to my, you know, people above me, I said, this will give me a platform to live stream all of my athletic contests through uh, with Zoom. If I, put somebody on the iPad and just go. We haven't really ironed that out yet. Um, and I do want to come back to another thing that Mike had asked about, you know, some of these options for social media. Um, one of the things he had asked was, you know, do you have to make three separate posts? I choose to because the audience is different on each post. But there are apps out there that uh, one of them is called Hootsuite, H-O-O-T-S-U-I-T-E that you will make you will generate one post and it will share it out to all three platforms now what happens on that is if you you know if you're in the mindset of making facebook posts so you make it two paragraphs long it's going to put it on twitter as an attachment so then that sort of defeats so that's why knowing your audience and knowing who you're kind of talking to is important there's some of my stuff on facebook that i don't need to go out on twitter so I don't put it out on Twitter. There's some of the stuff on Instagram that I don't want to go out on the Facebook because I just want the kids to see it. So I don't put it out on Facebook. So to answer Mike's question, yes, there are apps that can sync. And actually with Facebook, where they own Instagram, you can have a Facebook connected to an Instagram account that will, it will sort of interact the same way. If you make an Instagram post, it will automatically put it on Facebook or vice versa. Twitter is not made that way um twitter is separate if you were going to link any two accounts you would kind of make your facebook and your instagram the same post and they have the ability to do that because they're owned by the same parent company and the reason for the and the reason for the attachment on twitter would be because of the the character count the character link yeah the limitation that twitter puts on how long a post can be you'll yeah. see a lot of like a professional athlete that puts out a long like a retirement post they'll type it into this is why they type it into their Apple iPhone, like notepad. They mm -hmm. post the message on a picture and then put the picture out. That, that's sort of, if you see stuff on Twitter like that, that's why. Yeah. The character limitation. And Instagram does not have a character limitation? They don't. Uh, they do not. But, you know, most people that are using Instagram aren't going to expand. You know, they're going to look at the picture and sort of see the basics of the text that's underneath the picture, but maybe not necessarily expand that text out to read the whole thing, unless it's like a Tom Brady retirement or, you know, stuff like, like a celebrity will put out something that's, that's long. Um, but most kids are just going to scroll right past it. So you need to put up a picture, you know, for the next slide, stop the scroll. And, and what we're going to talk about next is just some different avenues and show you some examples of that. And if I could echo, um, Arch, your question about live streaming. So we paid a student 
he was actually a freshman this year, $10 a basketball game to basically follow the basketball around uh, with the, with the live stream camera with soccer. I actually set it up on a tripod that's up in the, up in the garage and, and it sees the whole field or pretty much the whole field. And with soccer, you're not, you're not changing the score as often obviously as you are with basketball. So if you can get at a point on like with basketball, I mean, with soccer or even field hockey, like where you've kind of pulled the camera back where you can get the whole field. People just want to like pop in and see what the score is. See, you know, they, they don't want to see everything up close and personal. Um, like when we're talking those outdoor sports. So I just walk around with my phone and I'm updating the score once there's a goal scored or whatever it may be. So just so another thought YouTube, if you're doing that, that on iPad. Sorry, sorry, Josh, that YouTube live stream through Zoom, um, is that a package that you buy? Well, you have to upgrade your Zoom account to a pro account. So like on, on Zoom right now where I'm the host, there's a little button at the bottom that shows up on my screen that doesn't show up on anybody else's and I'm not sure if anybody else has a pro account, but where I'm the host with a pro account, I would just click this button, uh, live stream to YouTube. And, and what's the cost of that, Dave? This account that we got has, uh, I think, two, two domain hosts, and it was 200 something dollars for the year. You could have one host, and it's a little bit less than that. Like, I think it was like 180 bucks for the whole year. But especially where everybody's going Zoom and, you know, I don't think remote learning is going anywhere, you know, as far as snow days or what whatnot in the future. It's certainly a good good price to get into right now. It's something something to get into right now. Um, so stopping the scroll or was somebody jumping in? Nope. So stopping the scroll, there are just different apps that could be used. Uh, the next slide is just a list of those. And, you know, I'm going to share this slideshow out so you don't have to you know you don't have to jot down or write you know some of these are free um, we'll show you some examples of those free you know over your phone most of them are phone based um, so that's the only thing is having a really like a good quality phone uh, to use these on uh, some of them are computer based that are free I use a lot I use Google slideshow and Google uh, drawing to create some images and some graphics and then I know uh, some others have used Microsoft um, there, there's some platforms there and then there's some stuff that you can pay for um, Adobe I had bought Adobe last school year but I never really learned how to use it so I got rid of that account uh, and it's quite expensive uh, Photoshop but that's a lot of the college level stuff that you see is Photoshop uh, they they have departments for this stuff and they're using Photoshop there are companies uh, I, I talked to a vendor at the national conference it's a company that partners with um, colleges and high schools across the country to make their make their graphic templates and all the all that the ad or the you know the marketing department has to do is put the picture in and change the text up a little bit hassan would be the example um, hassan was a client of this company um, and they pay annually i think it's a thousand dollar subscription to have access to all their content and then hassan's um, assistant ad for media would, would be the one that changes the content in there and then you know like if you look at jeremy's screen my screen and bunky's screen um, BSN or whites even can put together logo shops for you if you're doing a lot of business with them uh, they'll put this stuff together for you I know Jeremy when we get to Jeremy's samples he'll kind of talk about some of that but whites has put together my logo shop um, you know I have different logos that I use and they're all in PNG form um, as opposed to JPEG and you know I'd ask for that conversion and, and that was why and sort of what Jeremy had talked about so those are different phone apps and we're going to kind of go through some samples of each so this is that canva um, c-a-n-v-a that i use a lot um, i make some stock as you can see the two you know the event canceled and the postponed um, graphic those are my if i have to cancel event i want to stop the scroll and i want that algorithm on facebook to uh, go out to more people i put that picture on there you know a, a, the brew of basketball one is a generic game day you know, post a picture that with a graphic that I'll put on there. Um, and then at the state meet for a track, I was putting out in live in real time. You know, when the kids would come off the podium, I was getting a picture of them and I was putting it out on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. I was putting out, you know, these results and those, you know, kids really appreciate in their families. I mean, that day, Mike can tell you, I was there with him um, at the state meet. I was on my phone, but I had to bring my portable charger. I mean, that, 
those days when you're posting live at these track meets and events like that, you're going to get the most interaction and, and bang for your buck on social media. Um, the other one up in the left corner was another one that I did after. Um, a couple of years ago, the boys in indoor track had won the EMITL championship and made that graphic. And I actually was able to put these on their, on their webpage as the, um, the stock photo for basically the rest of the school year. Uh, Rick is really good with Ripple, and he'll kind of take that one. Yeah, well, Dave, I'll need your help. Those are links. All right, yeah. Uh, but again, just to show you like game day stuff, this is what I do every day for um, Herman, my my school. What what's going on? I make these pictures and then create the the video and put that on my Facebook and my uh, Twitter page, and that is done right from Ripple, uh, so I don't have to save it and whatever, I, I can just post directly from there um, to all of those uh, different platforms. I also do the Big East page. Um, so this is what I do for Big East. Here's, here's uh, final scores from the night. I put this on at the end of every day for on, on the Big East Facebook page and the Big East Twitter page. Uh, so it's just a way to create a little slideshow I guess, and, uh, you know, and get information out with some cool graphics that hopefully stop the scroll. Well, the other thing that Rick, Rick had put on there that's uh, really important to this and kind of, well, secondary too, is that if you watch this Ripple starts with a sponsor and ends with a sponsor, you can sell these social media graphics to a local business, you know, once the economy rebounds and have them, kind of partner with your brand as well. Um, this is a way to generate some revenue. Uh, you know, we're going to start selling our social media graphics. Uh, we'll probably do a thousand dollar annual sponsorship to, uh, to somebody that, that approached us about it because of our reach online. Uh, this is a way to, to generate some revenue as well. Uh, stays with Rick. He's, he's found a new app. And uh, as you can see, this is uh, this is some really sharp stuff that, uh, that he's come up with. So go ahead, Rick. Yeah, again, in all of the my uh, free time here, I stumbled onto a site on Facebook and, and a, a gentleman was offering a tutorial, if you will, on using or creating graphics and the, the apps that he used were this one over and uh, another one, um, uh, what's that What's that called, Dave? Pro? Pro, uh, pro knockout. Pro knockout, yeah, sorry. Uh, this one just allows you to basically over, I think the name is generated from it, allows you to create layers um, on a photo. And so you can create a background and then color the background and then put graphics over the colored background that's on the other background. And again, um, and, and then this allows you to save the template. So the, and the, you can see my football template for my game day. That, that's probably what I'm going to use all year. That's that's my field in the background. Uh, two helmets that are in PNG form and game day. And, and that's, that's really the type of information that the people that I, uh, in my community, that, that's the stuff that they're, they're looking for. Um, the other stuff you can see that I did is just promoting individual accomplishments. Uh, the, the PVC, all academics just came out for the, for the spring. And then obviously the, the Lobster Bowl teams were announced. Um, so there's a couple of examples of student athlete promotion in addition to a couple of examples of game day um, graphics. So the thing, um, one of the takeaways here is Rick had alluded to the PNG. That's that example, the football helmets overlay on that picture. You know, the, a JPEG would be a square. There would be a square background of some sort of color behind, usually white, uh, would be a square behind that helmet. And, you know, and, and also it sort, sort of talks about that brand. I mean, you look at that John Bapps helmet, that's synonymous with John Bapps Memorial High School. Is that, you know, that horse, um, the, the, the knight, so to speak, the crusader on the horse. Like that's, that's their brand. That's their image. That's what you think of when you think about John Bapps High School. Same thing with Herman, the, the the large wingspan hawk. I mean, that's, that's that brand and that image that you want people to, uh, to recognize your school with. 
and one of the other things, Dave, I'll add real quick with that pro knockout, you can take any JPEG and in that pro knockout, you can trace it and create a PNG. So like the girl in the softball picture down in the lower left corner, the all academic, that her picture was at one time a PNG, uh, a JPEG. I put it into that pro knockout, traced it, and then it creates a PNG that I can now put over something else and not have the square in the background and, and stuff. So that's the, that's the uh, side of pro knockout that was, uh, that's beneficial. And on this over, um, I can now connect it to my Instagram and any graphic that I create, I can immediately post it on Instagram. And Arch, that pro knockout is the one I use to like lasso your head and put it on the different uh, Photoshop images. That's the, uh... <laughs> so these are, these are all things that are apps on phones. Yep. 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 Rick, so, do you pay a subscription at all to that over? Nope. It's all free. There is a, there is a pro version, Jeremy, that has a little bit more features and so on, but for the most part, uh, what I need is all within the free app. Yeah, and that's the same with Canva. I think I paid for the pro account in Canva because it was like three bucks. And it, it just gives you more template uh, templates to choose from, some of their you know, higher end templates. Like, so these are stock templates that they have. Um, but you know, if you go to the pro account, it gives you access to a little bit higher end graphic and some of their font options. Hey, question for Rick and Dave. Rick, on your pro knockout, when you change, when you chase, uh, trace that uh, PDF to a JPEG, and then yeah. go over to over, how long does that take? Well, it took me a while the first few times I did it, but I'm getting better at it. Um, but what you what that does, if you do it once and then create a project with it in, you know, the over, that saves the project. So now you can just, just slide the picture in or slide the picture in or just put a new graphic in with that picture. Okay. And they become more advanced on pro knockout too, where you can basically click on, you know, if it was like a picture that I'm on the, on the shared screen, like number 13, I could just click on sort of number 13 and it will, it, it's called a lasso. It'll lasso number 13 and pull his body kind of out of that photo. Like they've oh, okay. become a little bit more advanced on, what you're trying to accomplish. So the next one is a, is a photo grid app that um, Rick uses. And then, you know, I kind of use another one called layout. I think they do almost the same thing. Um, yeah. I'll let this Rick one's super easy. This is a JPEG and you put it on the screen and then you can manipulate what style outline of font you want. And that's it done. That, that one's, that one is like a two minute job with a picture. And that's free as well. Free yep. as well. So, so David on Canva, can you upload your uh, logo and stuff on that? Oh yeah. Photo? Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. So you just make a stock one or yep. standard one. Okay. Um, and then I use uh, for this is basically a photo collage platform. It's called Layout. Um, so as you can see, I, I've made some photo collages, and this was around. 2018, when they they were uh, the two teams won the state championships, I made photo collages, and this is sort of where that you know that stockpile of photos. I didn't take any of these photos, you know. This, this was, you know, you've got people in your community that take photos and then they share the albums with you, um, or they put them on their own Facebook page and then you go and find them, right click on them, and then save them. Um, I did not take any of these photos, but I got permission from these people to use them. You save them to your phone, you know, and then I use this uh, layout. Um, the free app called Layout, which is basically a photo collage app um, that, that allows you to sort of move them around and put them in the format that you want. Um, this is a Google slide, a Google drawing example. Uh, as you can see, so this is kind of the classic example of a JPEG on my 2017 football schedule. I took a nice picture that somebody took, made that as my main background. But that, you know, the, the white squares by the, the logos, that's what a JPEG would look like. If that was in a PNG form, it would be, you know, obviously transparent through the top of that B. Um, you know, you can see that I used the JPEG uh, Brewer Witch, the Crest logo on the right, you know, for my, I've made a stock um, press release slide where I type in my content. 
at the bottom of it, but I've got all of my information at the top left. Um, this was one of the things that was really talked about at the national conference this year was making a stock branded press release um, looking, looking uh, image for your social media accounts. Um, but that's also a JPEG image that's on the top there. And then another one is just a, this is called in, in your Google account, just Google drawing. Uh, you make text boxes and, and fill them in with colors and things like that. It's nothing too elaborate, but again, it's free and it's easy to use. This is the format that I'll, I'll put out my complete list of all academic kids. Um, I'll, that will probably come out next week, but this is Google drawing is where I'll do that. Um, and, and it's, and it's easy. It saves it right into your Google drive. Uh, Jeremy's the next one. He's got a lot of really sharp stuff on uh, social media and I'm going to let him, let him take over. Yeah, so um, I, I use uh, Photoshop, um, and then I, I also have uh, partnered with BSN as well. Um, and then a, a part of what I work with with BSN is um, local development. So I, I talked at, at length with a lot of their developers um, through Mark um, about really kind of branding Old Town um, we, we had at, when I first got here, we had a lot of different renditions of what was out there. We had a, a, a lot of community, uh, involvement with people that were just taking our logos and doing what they wanted with them. So I tried to refocus on that branding aspect, um, with our block OT and our coyote. Um, so working through with BSN, um, I was able to, um, get access to a logo developer that they have. Um, and with that, I'm able to create uh, it, basically anything that I would like to do um, using some basic templates that they have, um, you know, that they've, that they've given me in essence, um, or given me access to. Um, I was talking with the group yesterday um, and I mean, I can go through a whole Photoshop tutorial um, or you can, like I said, simply just do a uh, you know Google search on on how to use Photoshop. But the big, the primary thing is you need access to Photoshop. You need to be able to buy it. It's it's a licensed. Uh, um, I think it's Microsoft that owns it. Um, so it, it kind of defeats the purpose if you do not have it. Um, with that being said, there are other things that you can do with stuff that we've talked about. Um, so if you look at my slide here. Um, from the Coyote Strong on the left-hand side all the way over to the OTO Hockey, um, those are all logos that have been created um, and manipulated and edited um, with a basis of BSN style um, artwork. Um, but the Coyote to the right is actually um, a base Coyote that we were looking at um, before we jumped on with the Arizona um, uh, or with Phoenix Coyotes, um, and, and it was an image that was created. Um, and the one to the left was just one that I pulled off the internet, and then I um, downloaded it as a JPEG and then brought it up in Max use a, a program called Preview. Um, and then I was able to, what Rick has talked about, use the lasso key um, and basically lasso the image and delete out the background, any kind of background to isolate the image. And then from there, I can add artwork to it, add, add whatever I need to add to it. Um, and believe it or not, I just do mine um, through Word, through Microsoft Word um, most of the time or some of the time for that matter, um, if I'm in a pinch to just get something done and don't really have the time to do things. Um, so I, you, can, you can take an image, um, put it into Word, um, there's some steps that you want to do to be able to manipulate and move it around, um, basically by um, text wrapping the image um, so that you can float it around. You got what they call put it to the back or or move it to the back of the of the actual document. And, and I can show anybody who needs to know how to. Should I stop sharing? Another my screen another back? Do you think to show this? You keep breaking up. Yeah, I, I, I was, uh, I was having my finger on the, on the uh, space bar instead of actually oh. having it strong. But should, should I, should I share my screen to be able to do this or? 
What do you think? Should I get into it? It's, it's, it's kind of in depth to, to do it a little bit, but basically you can create a, a Microsoft Word and then drop a, a picture in there um, and then manipulate the picture for what you need, add graphics, add, I mean, Microsoft has some basic graphic additions to it, uh, Microsoft Word. Um, and then you can take that and you can save that as a, as a PDF and then move that and then export that PDF to a, to a JPEG to be able to manipulate and use it. Um, and then from there you can add it to, to the different, uh, um, add it to the different uh, uh, programs that we've talked about already between Canva and Over and Knockout. Um, Photoshop has taken some time to learn, um, but it, it's, if you have the basis of grabbing images off of either the internet um, or off of, um, you know, somebody that has, um, you know, developed a, a logo for you. Um, and it's basically using the same techniques and, and, and such, but more of an intricate level and takes a little bit more time. Um, but once you have those, those basic, um, you know, basic elements down such a the logos you want, um, you can just add stuff to them very easily. So you, so basically, if you looked at my my Dropbox right now, I have a whole file that's called logos, and it's basically just a a base of all our our OTs and our coyotes in, in different formats um, and in words and in uh, different texts and and whatnot. And I can literally, I've gotten to the point now where I can just piece stuff together really quickly. Um, and make, you know, different, different logos that we have. Um, you know, we were lucky, Archer and I were lucky with the OTO um, logo that uh, our, our hockey coach had a connection to a graphic designer and he, uh, we re, re-logoed or re-imaged ourselves there with, um, with it this, this hockey season. If you remember our old one kind of looked like a, a rabid humane um, you know, logo. Um, this one we thought was a lot cleaner um, and went on um, the jerseys that we have. Um, and then with that, they, they actually gave us, you know, those logos um, to work with. So what I've been able to do is take that logo and they gave us all the rights to them and everything. And I can take that logo and in a JPEG form, lasso it um, and, and isolate the, the bear, or isolate the OTO or isolate the hockey um, and, then, and then take that and, and create my own from there on out. Um, so it's, it's, like I said, it's a lot of, a lot of playing, um, a lot of playing around um, and a lot of creating kind of those base graphics. Um, and then from there, adding all the, the, the fun stuff to them. Is, is essentially what I do in all my spare time. Any questions for uh, Jeremy related to Photoshop and um, in, in, his, in his logo shop, I guess, uh, as well? All right, so one of the things to kind of uh, wrap this up is uh, just some resources. And again, this will be shared out with everybody. Uh, I'm gonna share access to the slideshow uh, after this meeting, uh, so you can get into it and just kind of scroll through, um, you know, but these are some pretty good resources on social media. This uh, high school athletic director is something that that's where Rick found uh, that resource for um, over. Um, and that's probably an app that I'm going to get involved in uh, really soon. Uh, but on Twitter and Facebook, there's some good stuff that you can grab onto uh, with proactive coaching uh, this Coach Hines is on Twitter. Uh, the MIAAA and the NFHS are very active on Twitter as well, uh, just feeding information out. And then if you just follow collegiate and professional coaches, there's, there's a lot of online stuff right now that coaches are doing as far as webinars and video sessions um, that, that they're doing for free. And they're posting when they go out uh, to their Instagrams and their Twitter pages. Um, you know, those are some really good things. I would say before I open this up, um, one of the things that the kind of the shutdown of traditional school setting has done is it's really highlighted the need for the ability for all of us to have a, have a means to communicate with a mass audience and, and how we're getting our announcements out and 
keeping our constituents informed about what's going on. Um, and I also think the other thing that a social media presence can do for you folks is it can justify what is the athletic department doing when there's no school going on. I mean, just making one or two posts a day, um, sharing out stuff or um, getting information to people that can be one of the things that you can tell people, you know, I've been, I've been working hard, even though you don't see it on the forefront because I'm not in school, but look at what the, you know, look at the amount of interactions that my page is still getting. So in an essence, it can be sort of job security, um, yeah. have a footprint. Um, Cause then you can kind of go back to people and say, you know, Hey, listen, we started fitness Friday at Brewer and this is where we put the format out um, or we've been recognizing our seniors on social media and you know in totality over the month of May it was seen by 10,000 different people um, you know so that that's just a <clears throat> social media can certainly do that um, it, it's it's become safer there are pros mm -hmm. and cons to each of them um, you know and, and knowing your audience and stopping the scroll I don't know if Rick Rick Jeremy yeah. or Josh want to Dave, I, I would just I would just reiterate uh, what you said. Um, this is something that I can show that I've been doing, <laughs> and it's a way for me to continue to try to be connected with my kids and, and community. Um, the other thing I would say is, if anybody, you know, you know, Dave did a great job putting this all together, and there was a ton of information, very useful information, and a lot of information. If somebody wants to talk to me about how to do something on over or on pro knockout or on um, photo grid or ripple or anything like that, if you have something specific, you know, reach out to me. I'll, I'll, we can set up a one-on-one -on -one of these and I'll show you what I do and, and see if that can help, you know. And I'm the same. If, if anybody wants to, you know, needs an individual kind of, uh, information on what I have done or what I do or whatnot just reach out as well um, I know that you know with 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 you know Rick and, and Utterback um, I, I'm trying to catch up as far as posting stuff I have you know uh, Josh talked a little bit about it I have a little more of a unique situation where ours are all tied together so I have a unique balance between you know if I if I show accolades to the athletes I have my academic and uh, you know, uh, my band and, and, uh, and, and theater kids that get angry at me because I haven't done anything for them. So I have to work back and forth between that and, and, a, and a light kind of a thin line juggle. But, uh, but yeah, if anybody ever wants to know a little bit more about what I, what I do with my graphics, um, you know, let me know. Just reach out. Josh? Yeah, I, I, I kind of echo what Rick said too. Like, I hate having to defend my job at this point, but with no spring sports and obviously having Saturdays free now, um, it's, you know, it's just something that I feel like, you know, every little thing that we can do to try to promote our schools, our athletic departments, anything, you know, it certainly helps. Um, I don't know if you can see, probably not. Um, yeah. No. Uh, on Facebook last night, I made what's called a frame. And it goes over your profile picture. So even like that, it says missing our students. And underneath that, it says Elder School Department. And it like blew up across Facebook last night with all the teachers changing that to uh, for their uh, profile pictures and things like that. And again, same thing. I just I feel like some people in the community are saying, why are teachers still getting paid? Why are people still getting paid when there's no school? Um, so, you know, anyway, we can promote our, our schools. Um, and keep the taxpayers happy, then that's certainly what we want to continue to do. I would say that on that note, we ought to be justifying or recording or, you know, making notes of what stuff we are doing just in case we get that question later on so we can, we can justify what we've been doing. So that's, that's been loud and clear for everything I've been hearing. Also, you guys did an outstanding job. I think you hit a home run. This, that was that was very well done. Good job. Thank you. Great job. Thank Anybody you. have any uh, questions that they want to throw at any of us? I see myself in my buck costume next week doing some videos. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yep. We'll have to get pro knockout to lasso you. <laughs> you have a trampoline? 
<laughs> I do. There you go. <laughs> Uh, if anybody has any, you know, any desire to learn more about, I guess, you know, I'm not an expert on Zoom, but I think that Zoom could be that next big thing as far as our ability to live stream in the fall. I don't see that going away. So um, if anybody wants to talk about that, we can, you know, we can, we can talk about that as far as a platform for, for live streaming and, 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 and creating a YouTube page. I know I mentioned it, but I didn't really talk about it. Um, you know, we've created a couple YouTube channels, uh, one for the Hall of Fame and one for the athletic department. And, uh, you know, again, it's knowing your audience and our Hall of Fame page is going to be a place where we put our video and Hall of Fame banquet and all that stuff. And the YouTube channel for the athletic page is going to be where we live stream. So. I, I will just say I got an email from my assistant principal about CDC guidelines to return to school. So that is encouraging. There's some pretty good information there. So yeah. the discussions being talked about coming yeah. back. Yeah. And if you, you've listened to anything Dr. Fauci has said, he, you know, he has even said, I think there can be football games in the fall, but there's not going to be people that, you know, in the, in the stadium. So um, I don't know how that would be any different at the high school level. I don't see there being 1,500 people at Doyle Field on a Friday night when we play Bangor. So I've got to come up with a way, and I think we all need to come up with a way that we're going to get that out, get that product out to the community. So Zoom could be that avenue through a, through a live stream channel. Um, I'm not, I don't know. I'm, I'm optimistic that there will be a fall season, but we're going to have to be creative about how we, how we put it out. So I've shared this slideshow with Bunky. Bunky will forward it to the entire PVC. Um, once I hit stop record, this will download the video to my desktop. So Bunky, once I email you the this video, send out the you know the link to the slideshow and the video all in one email. I know there were some people that couldn't get on. 